Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Boris FX, and today we're going to talk about BCC10, now available for OFX tools. I'm doubling as your ghost host with the most today, and give you a head start on entering to win our Halloween contest. While we'd love to see an original project, if you don't have your own footage, you can feel free to download our own footage here and put your own spin on it. I'm going to be showing you how to use the BCC tools inside of Nuke. I'm actually doing one effect with the Mocha Pro plugin, but we're not going to focus on that. What we are going to focus on is using the BCC Fast Film Process, Ray's Puffy, and BCC Magic Sharp. I'm also going to be touching on the BCC Particle Emitter 3D and BCC Gaussian Blur. So I want to start by showing you what I did to open the eyes of the statue. The first thing I did was make myself a little PSD. But when you have a PSD, you actually have to break out the layers. So we're going to break out the layers inside of Nuke. And now we have a whole comp, and we can just basically see our various layers right here. So we have eyelids, some irises, and blank eyes. So once we have all of those composited together, we're going to need to do a grid warp on these eyelids to make them open. So I simply hit tab, we type in grid warp. So now we've got a grid warp that we can actually animate. In this case, we can open the eyelids like so. And we can set our keyframes by hitting set a key. Once that's done, we can use Mocha Pro and launch our Mocha UI to track the eye area of our statue. Once we've tracked the eye area, we can turn our surface tool on and align it to the eyes. I can go to my Insert tab, and I can go to my Layer Properties. We're going to use Insert Layer. In our Insert tab, we can't see anything yet, so we've got to save this and close it. And we're going to take our Insert, and we're going to link it to this Merge. So now, when I launch my Mocha UI, and I go to my Insert, Eyes, Insert Layer, now we've got our open eyes inside of our comp. So we can save this and close this, and we can go to Render, and we can Insert Composite. All right, so that'll render our Insert Composite right back to our timeline. And I'm going to go ahead and close all of my tabs. And let's move this down so we have a nice clean comp. If we feel like this is messy, we can hit another M and just bring this down so that our comp is a little bit cleaner. It's not really necessary, but depends on how much of a stickler you are for trees. So that was a really, really quick overview of the Mocha Pro OFX plugin. I don't want to focus on it because we want to focus on the BCC 10 tools working inside of Nuke and other OFX platforms. So let's select our Mocha Pro node now, and we're going to hit Tab. Inside of Tab, we're going to go to BCC, Fast, Film, and we're going to select Fast Film Process. Now what Fast Film Process will do is Fast Film Process, if you launch the Effects Browser, will give you several looks to choose from. I'm not going to use any of those looks. I'm actually going to build my own. So we're going to go into our Let's just make sure that we're viewing this in the viewer. And we're going to go into our lens misting, for example. We can increase the misting in our shadow and in our highlights. Okay, and that's going to make it a little bit brighter and fuzzier. We're going to go into our film tinting. We can change the overall tint of our film. So let's bring some of the red down, take some of the green up, and maybe, maybe let's bring this more towards a cyan sort of color. And let's increase the overall tint. We want to make it look kind of more sickly. So here's before and here's after. All right. Now I kind of want to brighten this up a little bit too. So let's go into post process. Let's go to post brightness. I don't want to brighten it too much. Let's do a contrast of five and a brightness. Let's do a brightness of five. So again, here's before and here's after. And that just kind of makes it look more desaturated, a little bit more sickly looking. So why is fast film process important? Well, the reason it's important is because you can make really quick looks and really quick color corrections that you can save as presets and share with your peers extremely easily. And it's all in a node that renders right inside of your new comp. All right, the next thing I'd like to cover is the BCC Particle Emitter 3D. So let's go ahead and make a merge here so that I can merge the effect back on top of my fast film process. Let's select our fast film process, hit tab and select BCC Particle Emitter 3D. Let's pull our Particle Emitter over here to the side and let's double click to open our properties. The first thing we can do is check our emitter. And what I'd like to do is see how this looks on top of my effects. We have to connect our merge. So let's increase the amount of particles. Let's slow the speed down quite a bit. All right, let's increase the particle lifespan to maximum. So they tend to float around more. And let's increase some of the speed randomness and slow these down even more. So let's leave the acceleration type at constant. 
And let's change the direction to downward and increase the spread by quite a bit. So what that will do is that will create a lot of particles moving through our comp. Let's decrease the birth rate there a little bit and let's adjust our particles. Now we can use particles from an image collection or let's select round blurs so we can get some softness to our edges so we make some dust motes. Let's decrease the size, increase the size random, and I don't really want a sized evolution. We can also change the particle colors. So let's like, make these a little darker and make them a little more blue and green. And let's take the opacity down a little bit as well and increase the opacity randomness a little bit. We have some on-screen controls that we can use to adjust the particle system. So we can make it sort of start at the top and we can adjust the system center as well and the camera position. We can play with external forces and put some air resistance and add some movement so that we get that dust mote look. We can even use a motion tracker to track our particles in our system as well. We can also pre-run our particles for a predetermined amount of time. I like to do that because it gives us a more robust field of particles. So once I'm happy with the position they're coming from, I can select my particle emitter and hit tab. And we're going to select BCC, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to add a Gaussian Blur on top of my particles so they get more of that realistic dust mote look. And let's close all of those. So BCC Particle Emitter 3D is a really quick way to add particles to your scene, and it gives you tons of control. As usual, there are tons of presets included with the BCC tools. Now the next thing I want to add is some light rays coming from these light sources up here. I want to make it look a little bit more spooky. So I'm going to select my merge. I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to select BCC Puffy. Sorry, BCC Rays Puffy. And I actually have some controls right here on my screen. I can increase the intensity and the ray length very, very quickly, and the light source. Now I think that's about how I want to design it. Again, I can select from many presets, like intense, or scales, or black and white, but we're going to go for the default for now. I can always use the effects browser, but we're going to use the default for now, and we're going to change to the image for the light source. Now here's what's cool about that. Light rays actually uses my image to build my rays and they move with my shot. One of the things I want you to notice about the BCC tools is how fast they are. So that light ray is super fast, very automatic, and it drops right into your comp. The last thing I want to talk about is BCC Magic Sharp, because this is kind of fuzzy looking footage, because it's been compressed a couple of times. We're going to hit Tab, and we're going to go to BCC Magic Sharp. BCC Magic Sharp applies an overall sharpness to our shot. Now what I want you to notice about this is that it doesn't give you hard white edges. So instead, it just brings out the detail. Now we probably want to take this to about 75, and that will give us a really nice grunge look to our shot, and bring out the detail of the statue's face, which is where we want the audience to look. It's also going to give more of a stylized grunge look in the background on these plants, sharpening the highlights and sharpening the shadows. If there were more texture on this background, it would give us a little bit of that look from Stranger Things, where we have the upside down. So that's a brief overview of the BCC 10 tools inside of Nuke, an OFX platform. Here's the before, and here's the after. I am Mary Poplin with Boris FX. Don't forget to enter our Halloween contest. We can't wait to see what you guys make. And don't forget, the BCC 10 tools are now available for OFX platforms. If you have any questions, you can find us on our website www.borisfx.com